So I had a viewer write me asking me how to go about cleaning the mode encoder switch on a JVC VCR because they had one that shut down with a tape stuck in it and they wanted to know what's the easiest way to remove the tape without causing damage to it and how to clean the mode switch on the machine and it's a model very similar to this one here that we're looking at and this one here is a what is this one? This is an HRD870. So I figured I'd go through the procedure. I've got a tape in it. I've purposely shut it down so the tape is stuck in the machine. And we'll go about removing this tape without damaging it. And we'll show you how to clean the mode switch on here. So let's just get this thing pulled apart. I'm just looking at a little bit of a shine problem here. I've just changed a few lights around in my, in my workbench here to try and get a little better picture. But I'm getting a bit of a reflection. So I'll just move some lights here a bit so that uh, so it'll look a little better on camera. Okay, let's get this thing taken apart and we'll get the tape out of this unit. So the first thing we'll do is we'll pull the screws out of the bottom. If you guys recognize this machine, it was one that I had done a service on before. I think we had, if I'm not mistaken, we had a power supply problem on this. And we had a capacitor failure in the drum circuit, and we also had we also had a um, I had this capacitor go bad in the drum, and we had one of the guides. One of the guides fell apart. That's right. This one had multiple problems. Well, the only problem this one's got today is the one that I just created to uh, give you guys a work through on how to eject the tape without damaging it too badly, and uh, how we're going to clean. The mode switch. The mode switch on this is uh, right inside here, so we're going to take that out and clean it. But um, first, let's get the tape up. First thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to remove the circuit board so we can get at the actual mechanism to wind the loading motor by hand. So we're going to take out the screws here that are marked with arrows, five screws here, so we can lift the circuit board out of the way. And now that allows us to access the loading motor which is right down here. We're going to need to turn that loading motor in order to retract the tape back in. More importantly though we're going to have to wind the cassette the tape back into the cassette and how that's done is by turning the pulley on the bottom here. That will wind the tape back into the cassette. So you have to turn that at the same time as you're turning the loading motor pulley down here. Where is it? Right down there. So as I turn the loading motor pulley, you will see that the, the guides will start to retract. Of course, that will allow the tape to become slack. So I just want to turn the bottom of the shaft here. Either way, it doesn't matter. Just to retract the tape back into the cassette. Like that. And as I continue to turn it, and I'm, you can see which way I'm turning the direction. I'm turning the direction in the, the pulley in the direction of the back of the machine. As I continue to turn that pulley, the cassette will lift. Don't do what I just did and knock the belt off the pulley either for the loading. Now sometimes this belt will break. That might be a reason why if you've got a machine that's eating the tape, check to make sure this belt here hasn't broken because that drives, that actually drives now that I've got the tape out, we can see what it drives. It drives this worm gear. So there's another pulley over here. So as that pulley turns, it drives that worm gear, as you can see here, which drives the main cam gear. The main cam gear is what loads and unloads the tape mechanism. So once we've wound the tape out, now we can put the circuit board back in because we no longer need it in this position. So we can put the board back in carefully. And for that matter, we can even reattach the screws because we won't need it out anymore. Make sure this lines up. There's a little hole here that goes through. And then the board should just drop right back in place. And you can replace the five screws that hold the board in place. We want to attach the board with at least a few of the screws because we're going to be turning the machine over and we don't necessarily want the circuit board falling out and 
possibly getting damaged while we're working on the bottom side of the machine. So we'll just put our five screws back in here. Now we can turn the machine over and work on the mode switch on the bottom. Now I need to unsolder this mode switch. The mode switch is right here. Another important thing is when you when you get the, the machine in the fully stop position, the mode switch will line up as a little alignment mark right here. You can see the position of the teeth here, they're lined up, right in line with each other. That's the eject position. So that's what position you're going to be starting. We're going to unsolder these four connections here so that we can lift this circuit board. I think we well, we gotta redo that one as well, but we gotta undo these four. We have to undo this screw here to take this switch out. We also need to remove a couple screws here. There's three screws that we have to take out. Four screws that we have to take out. Two of them are grounding screws on the circuit board here. So this one's a ground screw here. And this one is a ground screw over here. And we're just waiting for the soldering iron to warm up so that I can remove the mode switch. I'm going to use my trusty solder sucker. As, uh, I'm trying not to use the uh, solder braid unless I have to because that stuff's ridiculously expensive. If you've bought any of that recently, you all know what I'm talking about. The last time I bought a little roll of solder wick, I don't know, I think that big that big, uh, that big uh, spindle I've got of it. I think I paid about twenty dollars for that thing. I've had that for twenty odd years. The uh, last time I went and priced them out, uh, a little, I kid you not, a little roll that had, I don't know, I think it had three meters on it, was like fifteen dollars. It was ridiculous. So I try to use that as little as possible. We'll use the solder, the solder pump. It does a good enough job and it doesn't cost anything to use and as you can see it works just release the little catch over here and the board should pop up quite easy I think I've missed this. I gotta take off this. There's one little more that I have to unsolve. I believe I gotta unsolve it out of the switch right there too, if I'm not mistaken. And now the board will lift up at least enough that I can. I don't need to take the board out all the way. I don't need to unsolder this LED over here for that matter. I just have to lift the board up enough that I can get the switch out. So now I can just remove this one screw. And I'm able to lift the, the board out of the way and lift the mode switch out. This is the one that we want to clean. Open up my door here a bit because it's getting kind of warm in here. Now we're going to hear all the noise from my neighbor's pressure washer. Okay, so we've got the mode switch here. We're going to pop this thing apart to clean it. And there's just a couple little clips that hold it together. Just pop it open like that on either side. And the switch will just pop apart. One more little catch right in the middle here. Hopefully I'm framed. I can't really see the monitor from where I'm, where I'm sitting. So I, I hope I'm in camera frame here. There we go. Switch opens up just like that. And here's our dirty connections inside. Now what happens with these connections, or what happens with these, these uh, switch contacts is they get dirty. And when they get dirty, as the switch, how it works is as the machine is changing modes, where am I here? There we are. 
as the machine is operating and changing modes the switch is moving back and forth and on the bottom of this you'll see that there are, are contacts and what they do is they provide an electrical connection between the different between the common here and the three different um, encoder paths so you'll have for example when the switch when the switch is sitting right here you'll have a connection across all four and when the switch is sitting here you've got a connection between these three switch is sitting here you've got a connection between that one and that one if the switch is here you'll have a connection between those three etc then over here oh then in here it's only this particular these two, these two and so forth as the switch moves back and forth it'll make and break connections with these different circuits and what that does is that signals the microprocessor as the switch moves back and forth as it goes from eject to stop to play to fast forward to reverse search etc as the mechanism changes position this tells the microprocessor what's going on when these contacts get dirty you have spikes of noise that confuse the microprocessor and then the microprocessor doesn't know what's going on and it'll usually stop sometimes it'll eat a tape all kinds of nasty things will happen so we just clean these out by just cleaning them up with a q-tip usually works pretty good clean the gunge out see that wipe the gunge out if it's really bad go ahead and uh, use a tip of a screwdriver or something to scrape scrape through the oxidization that'll work you can see what I've got out of that just from that little bit of cleaning there tip of a screwdriver you can take it break through the surface tension especially if it's in a been in a home where someone's a smoker uh, the tar and nicotine from cigarette smoke will coat these connections and cause them to oxidize and just become resistors instead of good contacts. We'll do the same thing for the switch. Wipe the switch off. Doesn't hurt to increase the tension slightly just by lifting the contacts up ever so slightly just to give it a little more of a spring. Then we'll take some contact cleaner such as neutral and we'll just spray the contacts what that will do is that will give it a protective coating of oil which will hopefully keep those contacts good and clean for many more years we can put the switch back together it snaps together like this and then just give your switch a good run back and forth a few times to polish up those contacts and then we can go back and replace it back in the machine remember we're going to take it we're going to put the, we're going to line it up with the the two little V's here that's our stop position so when we put it back in and put the screw back in we want to make sure that that V is lined up because that is the position that the mechanism is in right now it's in the full stop position so once again we'll just lift the board up out of the way out here and we'll drop our mode switch back in put the circuit board back in and we'll replace the screw that holds the mode switch in position again we have to make sure that I'm having little pieces of silver fall on me here from a uh, reflector on a light so we want to make sure our switch is lined up which we can adjust here before we tighten it down so that our V groove is lined up once we're satisfied that our alignment is correct, we can go ahead 
and resolder the four connections for the switch as well as the two connections for the cassette interlock which is the two at the back here if you forget to resolder these ones you'll have a machine that will only play tapes as that's the record lockout switch that uh, tells the machine whether there's a tab in place or not and you're able to make a recording. Now that we've got that resolder, we should be able to turn the machine. Oh, we got to put the screws back in here for the circuit board. Very important because two of them are grounding screws and if the board is not grounded, it's not going to work properly. So we'll put our screws back in. The long screws are the ground screws. Okay, let's turn this machine over here and uh, check it out and make sure that everything is uh, working as it should be. Okay, now we've got our machine fired up. Load the tape up, press play, and it threads up, and it's playing, and as you can see, we have playback. Our problem is now solved as far as the mode switch goes. Pan the camera back down here and you'll see that it will go through all the mechanisms, all the, all the proper modes. Reverse search works, play works, forward search works. We'll go into full rewind so I stop it. Then when I press rewind, the mechanism will go into rewind. Unload the tape halfway, go into full rewind, stop, and back into play. And I will eject the tape. There we go. That's how you clean a mode switch. Anyway, um, hope you guys enjoyed this one and I got some more stuff coming up. I got a few other things up my sleeve that I'm going to start working on here pretty darn quick.